everybody, I'm Danny Otto. Welcome into an all new episode of That Recap Show. Now, before we get into the episode, just wanted to issue major spoiler alert. We are going to be going over everything that we loved from across the Spider-Verse. So if you haven't seen that movie yet, you may want to pause this video, head to your local movie theaters, watch that movie, so recommend it, and then come back and enjoy the breakdown. Now with that out of the way, let's start the show. Popping Off presents... That Recap Show. Joining with me to break down everything we possibly can from across the Spider Verse, it's Johnny Rico. Hello. Hello. Hey, that's the, that's from the first movie. Hey. <laughs> I keep saying I said all the stuff we love, everything we possibly can, because it's impossible to break down every e Easter egg, every reference, everything that we enjoyed from this movie. It, it, I mean, this video would be longer than the movie if we broke down every every single possible thing possible. But uh, I think that would we're need just... several viewings just to like catch everything. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but like, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't, I'm hoping at this point, you know, we, we gave a spoiler warning before we even started. So I'm hoping at this point you saw the movie and you enjoyed it as much as both of us did. I, I really don't know what how to say it any better. Like, I, I cannot say enough how much I enjoyed this movie. And, I, I mean, to no surprise, because, I mean, I, I really liked the first movie. It, it The first one is one of my go-to, you know, if I'm, you know, bumming around at home, I'll just put it on because it's I, I always enjoy it, even during rewatches. And I've probably rewatched it, like, I don't know, 10, 15 times, just, you know, just having it on. Um, but what I really enjoyed about this is I think it's, just as good, if not better, than the first one. But it takes everything I loved from the first one and kind of just puts it on a bigger scale, like a, a grander scale, when you kind of throw in not only a, a small group of uh, spider people from the Spider-Verse, but just the insanity amount of, of different spider people that we get in this movie. And just even, even the quick shots of... We got a spider cat! Like... I got everything I wanted from this, from this movie. That's anyway, Spider T-Rex. Exactly. Spider <laughs> T-Rex also. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. So, like, grander scale is is kind of almost, like, saying it too, like, too simple of, of saying it type of thing. Everything I loved from the first one just amped it up to 11, basically. And, I mean, there's so much I can't wait to talk about from this movie. I I mean, the my first reaction is, I'm so spoiled, I, I wish... It was already available on demand because I want to rewatch it from the comfort of my own home, like multiple times again. Like, like that's mm -hmm. that's the situation I'm in. One thing that I do have to note that I wanted to make sure that I did note, and and Rico knows this very well, is that I am the type of person where I really do not like to go to the movies alone. Like, I just, <laughs> I just don't. I just, it feels strange to me. It feels off. Same thing with like eating at a restaurant. Now I've eaten, I, I've ate at a restaurant alone, you know, on a lunch break and stuff like that. When you have to, it, fine. But but stranger to me than that is going to the movies alone because you know in in the past I've always gone with somebody like you know family, friends, anything like that, dates. That's what you do. You go with with other people, and so you can kind of enjoy it, and then you can talk about it immediately after. I really wanted to see this so bad that this was. The movie that I chose to go and view alone at a movie theater. <laughs> Congrats, and, Danny! You did and it. Even that, even that, that being my first odd, like experience alone at a movie theater, like going to see a movie alone, still one of my absolute all-time favorite movies. <laughs> so. Yeah. So we'll see if that streak continues um, moving forward with movies or if I'm still if I'm going to go back to just seeing movies with other people at the movie theater. But Rico, before I could go on and on and on. But before I do, what were some of your like instant reactions to this movie? 
Uh, yeah, I saw this alone as well. Oh! And uh, yeah, but I've done it plenty of times already. I find it very peaceful. And, and you know, I just, I'm, I'm a homebody. So I guess, you know, I don't, I don't have to worry about somebody like, you know, asking me, hey, what's going on here if they don't get it? I think that's kind of the whole thing is because I, te- I tend to know what I'm watching before I go into it. Right. So like, what's what, what's happening? What, how does it work? Uh, yeah, so I like to watch it alone for that almost that very reason. So, um, yeah, okay. So, yeah, this movie is fantastic. Um, it's my <clears throat> it's my favorite movie of the year so far. Uh, if, I, I it's the Empire Strikes Back, of basically of like Spider Man movies, basically. So, uh, you know, you, you have the first movie where you have Miles, who's kind of like this little Luke character who's kind of thrust into this new world uh, by becoming the new Spider Man of his his universe, and then all of a sudden he meets. Uh, you know, Gwen and then Spider Noir and Spider Ham and all these guys. And so he's basically Peter B. Parker. Yeah, he's got his little band of misfits that kind of help him uh, defeat his his villain in the first movie, right? Um, and then in the second movie, you know, he the the characters are all thrust into this even bigger conflict, uh, you know, involving the multiverse and, and you know, Miguel O'Hara. And, and, you know, they have their own uh, battles going in there too. But, um, you know, and it ultimately ends in this, you know, giant twist, which is just fantastic. Um, but, yeah, there's there's so much to love about this movie. The way they 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 craft it with the music. First of all, the music is just a, yeah. amazing. Um, the, from the score to the actual soundtrack. Um, there, we were talking about this when we were playing uh Fortnite one night. Um, but like there was no like real standout hit for this movie as compared to the first one. You know, you had Sunflower and and uh, and uh, What's Up Danger. Yep. Uh, this one has just like a lot of great songs throughout it, which is really cool too. Like one of the opening songs I remember is, is a song by Rakim, uh, which is one of my favorite hip hop songs. Um, but uh, yeah, but the movie, music throughout it is still pretty solid, and and, um, and and it has a lot of great family moments. I think the way they emphasize on family throughout the whole movie is really great, and how they dive into that, and they use some small moments between some characters and use it to prove to catapult into like the bigger storytelling um yeah and man it just it ends on this great cliffhanger and just leaves you wanting more right and uh i, I one thing about the ending to me is i, I remember when it ended it was like oh it's 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 like it's over like it's you know, like <laughs> it's like it just like ends a little bit like it does ramp up to what feels like an ending uh kind of like you know cut the black scene but i just remember like everything happening but as it ended i was like Oh, I was, I was like ready for like another hour. I think that, that's kind of kind of what it was. So it's like it, it moves really fast, and, and um, but yeah, I I can't wait for for uh, Beyond the Spider Verse is going to be the uh, the third one. So uh, uh, yeah, this was this was great. Yeah, I mean, I, I like exactly how how you described it. Empire Strikes Back. I was almost thinking, almost like comparing it to like a, a Marvel movie, thinking Infinity War, where we, you know, you have that ending where you go oh shit Mm -hmm. and and like you immediately want to see what happens next but then you have to wait a year march 2024 cannot get here soon enough um but yeah i I mean i think exactly what you said kind of leads perfectly into uh one of my big takeaways so rico would you like to get into some big takeaways yeah let's do it awesome all right so what were you what you were saying was about the twist and before i get into that i do i do have to say one thing just like you were saying, this was this is one of the longest animated movies, but it in no way felt like that. Like just like you said, I could have sat there for another hour, hour and a half, and and been perfectly fine. I did not think that much time went by when uh when when the movie had ended. Like it was one of those things where I was like, How long have I been here? <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Um, but just like you said, the pacing of the movie was great. They fit so much into it. That I, just like you said, I, I am so excited to see you know beyond uh, the Spider Verse and and you know where I'm assuming he's going to pick up right where this one left off because uh, it almost looks like yeah they already finished it and it's just and they picked that spot that perfect spot mm-hmm. to make everybody want to come back and watch again. But diving into my takeaway, like I said, building off of what you were talking about with that twist, I loved the twist and oh, and. Yeah. I don't want to sit here and sound like we've established sound like comic book guy from the Simpsons. I don't want to sound like that. But I was paying attention because they made an emphasis on 42 multiple times. Spot brings it up mm-hmm. and says he grabbed the spider from universe 42. Um, the, the spider itself, they, they, they showed a bunch of close ups over and over again of it ha- having 42 on it. And 
you know, so by the time we got to the scene where Miles is, you know, using the the go home, go back home machine, I'm like paying attention to things at this point. And I couldn't remember off the top of my head that, you know, 1610 was Miles' regular universe, but I knew that it wasn't 42. And I know I saw on the machine, it said 42. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Miles is not going back to the right place. But the way that they did that slow burn to kind of push us into figuring it out, because Miles figures it out, Gwen figures it out. It's just that that really awesome way of storytelling where they kind of very slowly let you see it because, you know, they at first didn't have any clues to kind of, you know, every universe has kind of looked a little different, whether it's the, the color scheme, whether it's, you know, how things are built and, and, and stuff like that. But the way that they were portraying in that moment it made it seem like it could have been the same universe. It was both dark and rainy in, in both universes where, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 the way that it unfolded and the way that they did it, I thought it was perfect. Now, like I said, I had already kind of in my head, I was like, wait a minute, he's not from 42, but just the way that it unfolded and, and the way that they, they, you know, presented it with that slow bird into the characters actually figuring it out was awesome. And I, I, I loved that part of it. And so that's why, you know, there's so many things from this movie that could have been made into a big takeaway. And and we could go on and on and on. But this one, for me, was that moment in the theater where I was like, fucking phenomenal movie. Like, oh, yeah. because of the way that they, they had that kind of slow burn for the characters to figure it out. I, I just, I loved that part. There's so many parts in this movie, like I said, that, that I, I want to point out and I could say that I loved. But that was, for me, I can instantly think of that was a big deal for me in the theater. So... Rico, what were some of your big takeaways from this movie? Yeah, um, I want to talk a little bit about the twist as well because I I really love the the build up to finding all like the the, the big moment right there where you find out that yeah. um, the miles of that universe has become the, the prowler, which yeah. is, is phenomenal. That was like a um, twist inside a twist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, um, you were talking about like how you can see like in the details, like obviously you were able to point out the the forty two, how you were you're able to pay attention to that detail going uh, as he was going through. Um, but the moment for me uh, was when they were talking about uh, Miles's hair and they're like, oh, you changed your hair. And it's like, oh, you took out your braids and stuff like that. And uh, uh, I was listening to a spoiler discussion with Christian Harloff and, and Winston Marshall and all these guys uh, and Koi Jandro. And they were talking about how like this movie did a really great job of almost giving like the audience like their own spidey sense. Because like that whole moment right there is like building up and like you have a sense that something's wrong, but you can't like put your finger on it, like just mm. quite yet yeah, until it's finally right that right there in your face. Um, like for some people, it's like kind of the way, like his, the way he's talking to his mom and that, and that particular scene, how, you know, cause she, I think that was also one of the things too, like the way they mentioned his hair and then like, she seemed off in, in the scene yeah. as well. When they were talking, I'm like, this isn't the the Rio that I remember them leaving at the, at the party. Um, so yeah, I thought that was just kind of like masterfully done in the way they reveal it at the end too. Cause I remember being like, Oh shit. Like, like, okay, okay, now things are really, and that's kind of like the, uh, the, the, the Han being captured by Boba Fett at the end of Empire, again, going back to the Empire comparison, right? And then you have like the, 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 the gang that's going to come and try and save him, uh, you know, that, that great shot of, it's almost Avengers like of, uh, of Gwen and the other Spider, yeah. the Spider Men and, and Spider Ham again, coming back, Spider Ham coming back. Love they got the band it. back together. Yeah, dude, love to see it. Um, but, yeah, that that just kind of culminated into this little great wrap up scene. Even though I did feel like it just kind of ended, it still was like a great ending shot. So, um, yeah, friend, great twist leading up to a great ending. Um, <clears throat> I have to acknowledge some of the, the 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 great cameos and Easter eggs that we got in this game. Uh, one of the first ones off the bat is uh, when we swing into uh, Miles's dorm. Uh, Genki is playing. Not the first Spider-Man game, but he's actually playing the upcoming Spider-Man 2 game, uh, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, and he's even talking about like himself in the, when the game. That's when he makes a comment about like not being the guy in the chair. I think he's actually talking about the game because <laughs> he's in the game as well. Um, so that's pretty cool. Like, you know, I would say that's a great Sony marketing right there because the game is coming out relatively soon. We saw a great gameplay trailer come out like about a little over a week ago, I would say. Yeah. Uh, so I can't wait for that. Um, the the spider society stuff has i mean easter eggs upon easter eggs upon easter eggs but i'm only going to point out a few of my uh favorite uh suits and then also you know non-spider man easter eggs as well 
But um, we get one shot of the Spider-Man from the, the, the PlayStation games within like one of the, a, a really quick shot. Uh, we get the Spectacular Spider-Man, which is one of my favorite Spider-Man animated series. We get a bunch of animated Spider-Man uh, yeah. cameos, um, all from ones like hangs that can remember their their names. Um, but there there's a ton of them there. Um, and then, of course, the the Donald Glover Prowler cameo, the live action cameo, which was pretty great. And of course, we got the uh, the the, to- the Toby uh, nod with the Uncle Ben scene, and then we got the uh, the uh, Andrew, Andrew Garfield and, and and Gwen scene. Of course, we had to see or no, uh, uh, Captain Stacy. Uh, we got to see that scene from the first uh, Amazing Spider Man because uh, again, we are they're talking about these 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 canon events, which is going to kind of lead into my next point here. Um, the, the focus on Gwen's backstory and, of course, the relationship between her and her father, of course, Captain Stacy and her universe, and the way it starts off with in her world with, um, you know, um, I don't know if it was like a weird canon thing because I, I, I want to say that so they, they show the fight between her and, and Peter as a lizard that, you know, that they show like how Peter died, basically, that we learned in the yeah. first movie when we learned how that happened. Um, but then I think, was it there's like a, a, a time gap where she comes back and then uh, her father is like, you're under arrest. And then that's when she leaves and joins Miguel. Is it in that time gap that she's working with uh, Miles for the first time, I wonder? And then when she, com- when she comes back to her universe, she tries to come home and then just immediately starts working with Miguel. So I was really confused on the timeline of when that happened between the first movie and the second movie. Um, I thought I took that as that was a few days where she kind of was on the run and then she came back to to kind of you know just just gather stuff type of thing. Mm-hmm. But I I don't think she had gone with the 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 Spider Society until that's that scene where um Miguel runs off. Yeah, very reluctant to take her. It's with the 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 vulture from like the um Da Vinci version. Or da Vinci vulture. Da Vinci vulture. Yeah. Yeah. I- Love first of all, that's amazing. It, was amazing. it also explains the Michael Keaton why why that vulture is is in the uh, Venom universe now because mm-hmm. all the vultures across think... the Spider Verse got mixed up. <laughs> yeah, it's so, explaining other stuff. Yeah, so I like the way they added like this context to Gwen's story, and and also kind of makes her like a a, a a bigger main character within this entire story that they're telling too, because the way she's obviously going to lead this this rescue mission on Miles, um, almost kind of like the Luke and Leia situation of it, or, or you know Han and Leia, or whatever you want, how you want to see their dynamic. But um, yeah, I think and the way they use that story to kind of forward the the bigger story, which was the the, the canon events that they were talking about, how like every single one has like these these really horrible moments that they have to experience to kind of forward their journey as Spider Man. And of course, there's the, like, you know, her father becoming the captain. And then, of course, Miles' father becoming the captain, the way that those two, two stories become intertwined that same way. And almost like this very back to the future way of trying to like stop it from happening. And, right. uh, or and, and in her case, it actually works out for her because her leaving actually ends up forcing her dad to quit. And she, you know, like unknowingly saves his, her dad's life by doing that, which is, you know, good, good ending for her. But, we wonder if we're gonna have that same ending for for Miles and his dad going in into the the third movie, um, <clears throat> but third and third and uh, third and final thing is I really need to give a credit to the amazing art design in this movie because this is just like one of the most beautiful movies I've ever had the 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 pleasure of watching in the theater. Um, so it's going back to Gwen, her her world is probably one of the most beautiful worlds in the whole movie. Uh, the the way that these these colors kind of bleed together, it's just all these shots are just moving art pieces, which is just like phenomenal. Um, the the art for Spider Punk, uh, yeah, Hobie, yeah. is fantastic. The way he's kind of like changing as he's moving and stuff like that. It's almost kind of like paper like too. Um, but not another great character too. Also played by Daniel Kaluuya. Uh, what he he was one of my favorite kind of like Spider Man within the in the movie as well as like the India, uh, Spider uh Spider Man who was played by Dopender from the yeah. Deadpool movies, which is really cool. <laughs> Uh, so great voice cast as well. Um, and then, of course, the way every Spider-Man has to have their own specific, uh, like, unique animation. Like, of course, even Miguel has, like, this very unique style of animation to, like, his his facial structure. And, of course, the way his suit is, just, like, way more bulky and, and different looking. Um, so, yeah, I, I the movie is just a, a, a beauty to look at every single frame. 
Uh, and I really like l- look forward to watching that over and over just as like hit pause, see it just like this beautiful art piece and then like kind of analyze it and then move on to the next one, hit pause, next new art piece to look at. It's like, it's it's amazing. It's like it's the whole movie's an art exhibit. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Dude, we could almost once it gets released on on demand, I, we could almost do another recap video and just talk about our our favorite, you know, easter eggs, our favorite art styles, our favorite, you know, just pause or, and you'll miss it moments type of thing. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because we can't do that in the theater. Like No. But that's why I'm like I'm so gung ho of like I really want this. Thing. I I I wanted to do it, break box office record, so I wanted to stay in the theaters because of that reason. Because I think oh, yeah. it's that good of a movie where it it definitely needs to break some records, so it needs to be in the theaters for a good period of time. But at the same time, selfishly, I want it to come out on demand very quickly so that I can start watching it again. Because that's I really do want to see it like multiple times already. Um, I just but, imagine myself in the theater, like with my popcorn and being like the projector guy, like, wait, pause, <laughs> pause. Okay, go, go, go. Okay, we're good. <laughs> now, all we have to do is befriend some people that work at local movie theaters and mm. then just come in after their last showing and just be like, hey, can we, I'll, can we set this up somehow? Like, yeah. just go through. You know how you can like rent a theater? I wonder yeah. if you can be like, hey, can I rent it? But also, like, pause movies, like, <laughs> on demand. <laughs> like, give me a big remote. controller. I, like, yeah, give a remote I can use. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay extra. <laughs> yeah, I'll pay extra if I can hold on to a massive controller and just pause it and rewind. Oh, that'd be fun. Uh, but anyway, I mean, just like I said, we can go on and on and on. But, like, maybe we really will do a follow-up for this one once it comes out on demand and we can talk kind of more about some of the pieces that we like seeing it the second time or the third time or, or little mm-hmm. Easter eggs that maybe we did miss because we were paying attention to the main storyline instead of, you know, all of the follow-up. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I, yeah, maybe we'll follow up. We'll have a follow-up video, but uh, Rico, before we go for too long, uh, what were, do you want to get to some predictions? Yes. Awesome. All right. Why don't you kick off predictions? Okay. Um, <laughs> so, First of all, uh, going into like the next movie, um, obviously we, uh, I, I brought up earlier, we got that great rooftop shot of, of Gwen and all the other spider uh, heroes, I would say, because, you know, you got Spider-Ham, you got Spider-Noir back in there. Uh, is it Kiko? Uh, I, I can't remember her name, the, the robot one. Um, and, and then a, uh, a couple of the ones from this movie as well, I believe. Uh, Hobie is there and everyone. So obviously... I brought up the uh, the Empire comparison, how, you know, this movie is the Empire. So, you know, I'm hoping for, the, for this next one to be the Return of the Jedi. And we know when I was a kid watching Return of the Jedi, one of my favorite thing was it was like all the ships, like every ship in that space battle. So, you know what I'm hoping to see? I'm hoping to see like the biggest ensemble of spider people uh, that we're probably ever going to get. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, obviously we've gotten it r- built up as the movie's gone on and this movie had a, a a great amount of spider men in it and the spider women. Um, but there, there's going to be some, but you always get like this, like team of like four or five though, like to really focus on. Right. So I hope really not only we get like the, the, the ones from the first two movies kind of like intertwined together. And first of all, seeing all those characters interact would be amazing, but we get like a bunch added on. And obviously I feel like we, we got to get some big surprises that they left for the third movie. Like I imagine that's why we didn't see Tom Holland. Um, <laughs> but there's, yeah, there's certain, certainly a lot to look forward to within the beyond the spider verse, especially if we only have a year, like yeah. they, they said, they're working on this movie right up until like the premiere. And so I imagine they're just they, like right into, you know, doing the work for the, the third movie as well. So I'm, I'm really excited for that. Um, but like right before the movie came out, we got an announcement that they are finally doing, a live action Miles Morales movie. Um, so obviously it's gonna be a Sony made uh, Miles Morales movie, which is you know good for them. They need their own like Spider-Man to kind of like I guess tie some of their movies together as well. So I think this is actually a good move on their part. And uh, but you know, in the movie we got the live action version of uh of the Prowler played by Donald Glover, um, also famously known for his role in the MCU as Aaron Davis. So <laughs> There's a couple of questions here is like one is this the Aaron, uh the Aaron Davis from the MCU is is it meant to be that like our acknowledgement of him but um or is he meant to be like the live action easter egg for what we're going to see in the Miles Morales movie um 
it would be great to see him like involved in a big mile story like that in general. I just want to see, I want to see him put on that mask because like, that's the one thing we saw him in his suit, but we didn't see him in the mask. Yeah. I'm like, oh, come on, you can't just give me like just that. Um, but yeah, I'm very curious to see what what his purpose is as that version of the prowler that we saw in, in this movie is going to be going forward because I really hope that like he's going to play this role at least a couple more times. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, this leads, I, I don't know. Are you done? I don't want to cut you off. But no, no, I'm good. Per- oh, this leads perfect. So I have two predictions. One, I'm totally on the same page with you. And, and with, I love that we got a, a an announcement for a, a, like a future live action Miles Morales. Yeah, that movie was a credit scene. Stuff like that. Yeah. I love that. And I, I do love that we've got we got the Easter egg with Donald Glover and and the Prowler and stuff like that. I'm hoping that Sony and MCU, you know, or Sony and Marvel, they've they've you know they've had this agreement now with Spider Man and and stuff like that to share certain people, certain assets. I'm hoping that the planning, because we did get Donald Glover's Prowler, I'm hoping that is part of the planning in there. Mm-hmm. So that maybe Sony does release a live action Miles Morales movie, not in the MCU. But because there are some ties between the two things, I'm hoping that there's some planning there with Kevin Feige and what is it, Amy Pascal? Yeah, Pascal. I'm, I'm hoping there's some planning for the future and for down the line where, you know, Secret Wars can bring anyone over that they want to share and that's the explanation for it and then moving forward we could easily have a storyline with miles and tom holland spider-man we could easily have that because secret wars would immediately bridge that gap so i'm hoping that these little breadcrumbs are kind of leading to that where we can just pull characters left and right where we want to and they can share them because we've already they've already seen both companies are already seen that the agreement works like the plan to share things works right. um so I'm hoping like that maybe you know what they have in their back pocket like and we'll see it unfold then because I would love to see you know <clears throat> Tom Holland a couple years down the line be that mentor role for a Miles who then becomes like the next major Spider-Man. And I I could right. see that. I mean it could very easily be a passing of the torch. It could very easily be that they exist at the same time. And they're in the same movie together, like post Secret War or even Secret War, and then whatever comes out after that, and then they both go their separate ways again, type of thing. It, it, the sky's the limit with that, but I just think it would be really cool. Um, so that's my my prediction for for that end of the spectrum, for that for just overall stuff that I'd love to see and I really hope for, um, and the sharing of the two universes and the characters. Um, my my prediction for solely. Uh, across the Spider Verse to beyond the Spider Verse, um, is that I think somehow our miles, like the miles that we've been following, sixteen ten miles, mm-hmm. is going to convince Universe Forty Two Miles, the Prowler, to help him stop Spot and save uh, our Miles' father in, in the process because. There's a line at the beginning that a lot of people have been pointing to that is a foreshadowing, potentially be foreshadowing. And it's with the guidance counselor scene. And the guidance counselor says, you can't have your cake and eat it too. And Miles' answer to that is, unless you have two cakes. (laughs) And what does he get his dad for the party? He gets his dad two cakes. My favorite, one of my favorite moments was when he opens that cake and it says, I'm not proud or whatever it is. (laughs) Because you're sweet swinging through, and yeah, he's yeah. like, I don't think that, that cake is going to be the same. <laughs> <laughs> but, so there's, 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 you know, there's reference of that, that classic saying, you can't have your cake and eat it too. And then Miles' answer is, unless you have two cakes. And then he gets two cakes for his dad. So there's two different instances where we're talking about two cakes. So maybe the whole canon event thing is, you know, maybe those are kind of foreshadowing for the canon event. We already know, you know, the spot's plan is to make him miles have to choose basically between mm-hmm. saving his dad and you know saving the city I, i'm assuming it's going to be saving his dad or saving gwen or something like that like you know what i mean like, i think it's going to be like that kind of choice um but i i really think that miles is going to try to get Pro- prowler miles on his side and say like look 
you couldn't save your dad, but together we can save a, like a version of like something, something I think is, is there where he, he can hopefully, you know, get him on his side and, and stuff like that. The other aspect of that that I wanted to kind of touch on is canon events. And just like you were talking about in takeaways and stuff like that with canon events, um, I saw a very interesting video and it was just me scrolling through TikTok. So I apologize. I don't know who to give credit to. It was just randomly going there. My newsfeed is filled with people talking about across the spider verse, which is awesome because mm -hmm. I love to, to have everybody's different takes and, and all of this stuff. And it, it makes all of these other, like makes me think of all of these other parts and, and stuff like that. So it's amazing. I just feel bad because I can't give a credit to the specific person. I've seen it multiple times, but I, I, you know, I usually like, just like you, I usually like to give credit where credit's due and I, I apologize. I can't, but the whole thing with canon events is, and, and what this was kind of alluding to is that because Earth 42 or Universe 42 miles was supposed to be bitten, and it kind of changed everything, like that our miles, 1610 miles, might not have the same canon events in things. Because just like, you know, Spider Man uh, 2099 said, uh, like he wasn't supposed to be Spider Man. He wasn't ex he wasn't exposed like exposed he wasn't supposed to exist type right. of thing. Um, so what's to say that saving his father is, is going to cause any damage type of thing? Because the the spy the the Spider Man the Miles that was supposed to be bit by a spider his father did die. Canon event, mm -hmm. boom, that happened. Now, Miles... Well, assuming did, that Miles was supposed to be Spider-Man, because a lot of them are supposed to be Peter, right? No, no, but you do see it. There's... And, and this is another part of that video that I saw. There is a, a part where Spot is explaining that he grabbed the spider from a different universe, and that's the spider that bit uh, Miles. Um, and it, you can see the back of uh, Prowler Miles's... Uh, oh, interesting. Yeah, it, it's a really quick shot, but yeah, you can you can see the, the back of his head. And it is, so it was really, so if Earth 42 or Universe 42, that was supposed to be a Miles. It was supposed to be the Miles that turned into Prowler. Got it. So, so that was like destined, that universe was destined to have Miles Morales as Spider-Man. And it didn't It's like happen. some, uh, some Flashpoint shit, man. Yeah! Uh, like when, when, you know, instead of, you know, uh, Thomas and Martha being shy as it is Bruce and all of a sudden Martha becomes the Joker. It's kind of like that whole, that's the whole thing. So yep. that's. That's a pretty cool little, uh, little nugget there. <laughs> it's so cool. It's I mean, this is one of the reasons why I absolutely love TikTok is because there's so many different voices talking about different little tiny parts of this movie that mm -hmm. like things that you didn't see because it was so it happened so quick you weren't you were paying attention to other stuff but you weren't you were seeing it but you weren't really picking it up and people pointed out and it's like and you're like holy shit you're right I didn't see that it's the back of uh prowler miles's head in in universe 42 so he was destined to be and that's why his father died and that's why bad things are, have happened and that's why that universe didn't correct itself also it's, that's why that universe didn't like have the incursion event i'm gonna i'm gonna call it an incursion event but where like the 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 big holes opened up and, and they had to contain it and stuff because everything happened except for miles becoming spider-man so like miles's father still passed away and i'm sure there were still other bad things that happened but nobody else became Spider-Man. Nobody, nothing else happened. All those those bad things still happened to Miles, which is why he had to become Prowler instead. Mm. So that explains that. And then, so that's why I'm wondering on the other side of things, are Miles like might not have to like adhere to the canon event things? Like he may still be able to save his dad, and nothing bad happened because he wasn't destined to be Spider-Man type of thing. Right. So. It's really interesting. There's so many things like we could point out. I mean, do you have anything else? I don't want to cut you. Like, there's so much to talk about with this. Like, I want to make sure we all, we both have like plenty of time to talk about what we want to from this. Yeah, a couple things. Um, <laughs> uh, kind of going back to my, you know, my return, return of the Jedi thing where I was like, you know, we want to get a bunch of spider, like, you know, Spider Man, Spider Women, Spider Animals, whatever it is. Like, give me more of the Spider T Rex. That was pretty, pretty. <laughs> freaking awesome to see i can't remember where i first saw that for the first time i think it must have been a comic uh but it was still fantastic but um <laughs> uh, i want to see like S spot kind of use his abilities to somehow like create like this almost like this big grand battle because it it's pretty typical for like a third trilogy movie but uh it was still pre be pretty cool to see like a bunch of spider heroes 
fighting off against like a bunch of villains from different dimensions as well and seeing like the alternate like uh like the variants of the, of the villains you can do throughout there too because we get you know a couple here and there i mean really vulture is kind of like the big one in this in this yep. movie i feel like and then spot but um i would like and then i think we get some scorpion too i think as well but um or, or, my, or is it the first movie but uh we, we get some in, in each each movie but i feel like we gotta get start getting more um I want to see Venom in some form in 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 the Spider Verse movies. Uh, uh, another great Easter egg, by the way, was the Venom Easter egg, where you just yes. get to see Miss Kim in <laughs> in the liquor store, and then there's like some some like piece of gum that says like Venomized something like that. Which, but so that was a great little nod to that. But I want to see him actually show up, and, and uh, that would be a lot of fun. Um, another thing uh, you were talking about is um, the, the the canon events and stuff like that. It man, it would be. Really interesting. Oh, we were talking about like the Secret Wars thing, bringing bringing him into the the MCU, and uh, it's kind of funny because the Secret Wars, the, the newest Secret Wars in in the comics, kind of did that with Miles to bring him into the normal comics universe. So it would make sense depending on when they're going to release this Miles movie because I figured they want to get that out for Secret Wars so you can kind of like, hey, here's Miles from that movie that just happened, right? right? Um, it would be kind of cool because when the Ultimate Comics ended. It was like, well, people love Miles, and and that's he's the ult, one of the ult, biggest ultimate characters there is. So I was like, okay, we'll use the Secret Wars. Boom! Now he's hanging out with our heroes now. Yeah, so exactly. that would be a pretty great way to do to do that too. I just love how meta movies are getting uh, now, but you know, because you got to amp up these these stories somehow. But um, yeah, man, I can't I can't wait for this. Same. I I'm right there with you. Maybe we really are going to have to have a, a follow-up video when we finally get to rewatch this. And, uh, I mean, as we always say, that's what we think! Let us know in the comments below, what did you think of this movie? And who is your favorite Spider-Person? I mean, there is no wrong answer. If, if T-Rex Spider-Man is, is your favorite, if Spider-Cat's your favorite, if, if any of them, it, it, sky's the limit. There's so many Spider-People in this movie. It's incredible. There, there's no wrong answers. And as always, don't forget, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to hear about all of our latest audio and video podcast releases. Bye, everybody! Popping Off presents That Recap Show.